Bryce Gum, being one of the most controversial YouTubers of all time, has had his fair share of meetups with people that he's not only criticized in the past, but has also been criticized for against. One of the first instances of Rice meeting up with his foes was in 2016, when he had a back and forth with the then internet punching bag, Jacob Sartorius. After Rice had made multiple videos on the team which included the diss track, both him and Jacob decided to link up for a collab video when Rice Gum hit 2 million subscribers. How did you feel when Rice Gum said, Yo, our fans are little kids under the age of 12. <laughs> Tell me why your ears make you look like an elf. It's not true. Like, it's not. Obviously. It's not true. Obviously it's not true. So with Rice Gum being cool there with Jacob, another one of his long list of rivals would also go on to be the ex binder Taylor Kniff, who had temporarily taken down Rice Gum's YouTube channel back during his initial growth in 2016. Rice would have talks about legitimately having a fight against Kniff, and had even dropped a diss track on him. Taylor tried to shut my YouTube down, he was jealous. Boy, oh. you need to keep a shirt on, got nothing to flex. How long does it take for food to travel down your neck after another video talking about their drama the two never ended up fighting in the year of 2016 but later on in 2017 during the cloudhouse era both rice and taylor would find each other in person showing that their beef was now water under the bridge no oh, i'm chill upstairs look who i ran into uh he ended up getting a nicer house to me so i was like i gotta start hanging out with this guy for you know what i'm saying it's all good it's all good it, it's all good in the hood but not all meetups so rice gum will be positive as in 2016 during his initial rise to fame gabby hannah aka the gabby show will put out a tweet that went on to catch rice's attention that would end up having him drop another one of his signature diss tracks on her you had the sub tweet try to keep it on the low like if the fans didn't add me i wouldn't know i pass you in subs because you're struggling to grow i don't think there's anything bigger than your nose gabby didn't like the video for obvious reasons and to counter back just about a year later she found herself at a youtuber party where rice gum was there too and she took this opportunity to go up and confront him with her camera out hey, rice Soon after this, Gabby continued on to her Snapchat stories, but this time was outside explaining that Ricegum had apparently hit her right after the interaction from the previous stories. Ricegum didn't think that joke was very funny and he hit me in the middle of a party and shattered my phone. Ricegum will go on to make a video on the whole situation, telling his side of the story. She walks up to me. Yeah, no, rap battle me. Come on. Can you not post that? Rap battle me. No, can you not post that? No, it's, it's fine. We're just having fun. I know, it's fine. It's, I know. it's okay. It's fine. I'm just having fun. But I, come on, Rice, you're going me. Come on. You little... I don't want to be on that. Oh my god. He had a witness clear his name and followed it up with releasing another diss track on her. So with Jacob, Taylor, and Gabby being three YouTuber personalities who all had Rice Gum become their biggest critic each, another creator out there by the name of iDubs would flip the switch when he went on to make a 30 plus minute exposed video under his Content Cop series critiquing Rice Gum back in 2017. Obnoxious, arrogant asshole. He is extremely insecure. You have nothing to be boastful about, you moron. While the two had met up with each other in person, there is footage on a Max Mofo vlog from the year prior in VidCon. Rideups was in close proximity to the guy that he would later go on to make the massive video about. Enhance. 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 <laughs> And these close in-person interactions wouldn't end there with iDubs. His first ever episode of his Content Cop series would be against the reaction YouTuber Jinx. And after both iDubs and the reactor had a whole back and forth online on whether or not they were going to fight each other, it never ended up happening, but iDubs did manage to see that first Content Cop victim in person at the aforementioned VidCon event in 2016. We found him. It's about that time. <laughs> Oh, and we also saw him meet with one of the fine bros after he had made his content call video on them. Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> While the Jinx and Rice Gum interactions weren't full on technical meetups between the opposing sides, and the Fine Bros guy interaction was chill, iDubs would take it up a notch in January of 2017 when he discreetly went into the meet and greet of his next content cop victim at the time, Tana Mojo. And this was because she had called him out on Twitter the month before for his usage of the N word. And with iDubs seeing how she was acting out of place while passing her in actions, he decided to attend the mentioned meet and greet and said the full on N word right next to her to see how she would react. <laughs> <laughs> Tana, where are you going? Where are the pictures? She ran off. I don't know what the deal is. Oh my what the hell? Tana! You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go.
getting kicked out apparently. You gotta go. I just you wanted a picture. Out. I'm VIP though. No, like, get out. You're breaking my heart. <laughs> I just wanted to see Tana, I just wanted to sign my pink Tana shirt. As the years went on, Tana was openly accepting of the content call video that was made on her, and Idubs himself had two changed as a person since then, and when H3H3's 2023 Steamies Awards event took place, they had one more showing of approval ship of each other after their story passed. Say <laughs> forgiveness! <laughs> Now, let's take it back to RiceGum once more, because since he had always been known as a trash talker in 2016, he continued that persona into the year 2017, during the Cloudhouse days. In the middle of that year, a new YouTuber on the rice named Jake Paul will pop up on everybody's radar after he dropped his infamous It's Every Day Bro song with his group Team 10. This song got roasted by anyone and everyone, including RiceGum himself, who not only dissed the song, but also went on to make numerous videos on Team 10 and Jake Paul, along with also dropping the now iconic diss track It's Every Night Sis, featuring Jake's ex-girlfriend, Alyssa Violet. With all parties living in the LA area, it was only a matter of time until some meetups took place between Rice and the Team 10 members. The first of them to interact with Rice Gum in person was Tessa Brooks, who Rice had directly dissed her on his song. On a good girl, and now Rice Gum will go face to face with her after she had found them at VidCon. Yo, what's up, Rice? So, uh, I'm hideous, right? No, no. Yo, yeah. Okay, so look, it was just I needed something that could rhyme with. Mm, it didn't whatever. rhyme though. Yeah, it did. No. Yeah, it did. Mm. And it was a slapper. Hey, 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 hey. Mm. Lit. Cool. Sweet. Hey. <laughs> so while that didn't get hostile, the same couldn't be said with the duo of Chance and Anthony from Team 10 when they decided that for a video idea, they were going to confront the quote unquote bully, Rice Gum, at his house. But unfortunately for them, Rice wasn't at the location during that time. And when Rice Gum found out about the duo pulling up to try and see him, he went on to make a video on the situation, calling out the duo. Dude, I wasn't home. If I was home, I would be walking downstairs and there would be no conversation. It would be straight fist. Today I got time. So pull up again, Chance, and I'll break that camera and slap the f out of you. So I'll be home all day, Chance, so pull up if you really try to get the work. If not, then just stay a weak ass at home. Irrelevant. And then within the week, by pure chance, both the duo of Chance and Anthony actually found Rice Gum out in public and confronted him. Rice Shoot. Gum, what's up, bro? Oh, what's poppin'? This is so random. Yo, no, I, I'm right here. You can smack me, bro. You, get, you get, if you were to come to my house, you know what I'm saying? But look, you can smack me though. Guys, I'm desperate. Damn, I'm bro. Whoa, this is actually Damn. so random. No, yeah, I'm just saying you're a little. Come to your crib. Yeah, no, I'm saying you're. Yeah. Okay. okay Rice this is the problem with everyone in the world, dude. I'm with Rice. Literally, I love when people talk to talk online and won't say a single word in person. Not a single Rice. word. Rice gum, run! Run away from me! Fear me! Bro, just desperate. shut your mouth, you're dude. For views. Please, just don't oh, talk relevant. to me. Yo, Jake's your daddy. Take ten percent. A irrelevant. <laughs> oh, he just. Okay. Will you slap me? No, I need no, a slap. No, no, oh, no, harder. No, no. Jake's your daddy. Oh my god. Bro. Nothing much more happened after that, as Rice just said that he chose to not do anything physical as he has stuff to lose with the way that his online career was going. Regarding meeting other Team 10 members though, when the team started collapsing later in the year, RiceGum did meet up with the Martinez twins, so I guess this could be added in here too. Yo! Martinez twins, oh. right? Yo! What's up? It's nice We're to good, yeah. see you guys in person, man. Oh, man. How are you? Nice. So man, dude, you guys are really nice. twins. And while that went well, perhaps Rice Gum's biggest enemy, and who he was the biggest critic of at the time, Jake Paul, the two had actually gone on to meet each other in person at an Austin McGroom basketball event, where in there, the two were conversing and had actually sat next to each other. I don't know why he put me next to this guy. Jordan. Yeah. Back. You stupid. Who? You stupid. So Wait, why did you bring your girl to this, bro? She was at the crib. Bro, come on, bro. What, what, what? You already know, bro. I Take a bite, bro. You're gonna need that, bro. Take a bite, bro. Get it out. Here we go. Why be in? Who's up? Peace out, Rice. Jake. Bye, Abby. That's awkward. During this event too, Ricegum had also come across Tanner Fox, a YouTube vlogger who he has had made videos on in the past, along with two diss tracks. According to Tanner at the event, the two had a bit of a shoving fiasco take place between them. Can you explain what happened? I heard a punch was thrown between you and Ricegum. Is this true? See, what happened was, he was vlogging, and then he goes, yo, f*** this kid. And I said, yo, f*** you. And then we started throwing down. Oh, I just pushed him. He goes, hey, yo, f 
this kid like, like eh. Now, both Rice and Tanner had actually met in the past, where they were kind of cool to each other in the year prior in 2018, after their initial beefs. But after the confrontation in that January 2019 basketball event, they saw each other one more time two years later at the YouTubers vs. TikTokers boxing press conference, where Rice clearly didn't vibe with Tanner anymore. Hey, Rice. I passed you, bro. I passed you, bro. Cool. I haven't posted in a year. Hey, but I still passed you, bro. This dude has like a thousand uploads. He can keep trying. Hey, still pass him, though. I respect I got more money. I got more money. That's debatable. Going over to Jake Paul now, his first legitimate big feud on the internet would be against FaZe Banks. This stemmed off of Jake's ex girlfriend, Alyssa, going over to the Cloud House and getting into a relationship with the FaZe member after she had a nasty fallout with Jake and Team 10. Months into the new pairing and amidst the Cloud Gang versus Team 10 rivalry, in 2017, Jake Paul will release a video onto his channel where his assistant has said that Banks had assaulted her by grabbing her by the neck in a rough manner. This garnered a quick response by Banks where he defended himself in a video with Alyssa and Rice, having Alyssa tell us her negative experiences with Jake in the past. This situation got very real, very quick, to the point where multiple things took place, including having Banks meet up with Jake in person during all of this. We didn't get any footage of them meeting up in person there, but as time went on, both Jake and Banks eventually squashed their beef and went on to even make some content together in the year 2019 where for the first time ever publicly on camera, they had interacted with each other in person. <laughs> yeah, it's probably weird for the audience right now. Definitely. We're doing a collab, surprise. Beef is like so 2018, bro. <laughs> Squash, that, bro. That's funny. Squash that You guys got chickens? We have one rooster, I don't even know where he is. Look who it is. <laughs> <laughs> I just got up. Come on, get, come on, bro. We're vlogging, bro, today. Say what's up, bro. Say what's up. Good morning, everybody. You're probably confused. <laughs> right? The chicken's gone, bro. We lost the rooster. Not the chicken, bro. It's all about positivity, man. And, you know, Throw the peace sign up. Throw the peace sign up. Give each other a hug, dude. Give each other a. <laughs> that was. So with Jake having squashed the beef there with FaZe Banks, just about two weeks after that, Jake decided to confront the quote-unquote cyberbully Cody Ko. Cody, being a commentary YouTuber with millions of subscribers, was known for making comedic videos on people and having a laugh at them while making jokes at their expense. And one of those people in Cody Ko's content was Jake Paul, who Cody had made various videos on. What is a Disney Channel flow? His audience is like 13 year olds. If you consider Jake your family, do you think he would be proud of you? Jake Paul Sucks. <laughs> when the YouTuber Jeff Wittick had Cody on to his barbershop series on his YouTube channel, Jeff secretly hit up Jake to have him come over, have a little bit of fun in Paul meeting up with Cody, but Jake decided to use this opportunity to call out the bully in Cody Co. in person. What's up, man? What's up, man? Are you trying to find me? What up, man? Be nice. I don't want to fight. Be nice. 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 Sorry, you said sorry, that's good. For real. Like, can't tell if he's joking. No, I'm not joking at all. That shit that you do, like you sitting in front of camera, like actually like can resonate into people's hearts and like that's not cool. I just don't like Yeah, he said sorry, bro. I'll shake your hand for that. No, no, just say no. You can dish jokes, you gotta be able to take them. Sit down, sit down. You know what I'm saying? You have clearly have a huge audience, but you're spreading so much negativity. So it's like where's that's fine, man. Where's the where's the line? You know, where's it like funny versus like that's f***ed up and like you're you're spreading like a lot of shit. On the internet, that's bad. I mean, we all have different lines. But that wasn't the only time that Jake will confront a big critic of his during this era of YouTube. During Jake's rise, Deji will be another one of the people that will make multiple videos on the controversial Paul brother. Start off a rap with Disney Channel flow. You've already just killed your rap. Jake Paul's kind of already shown that he might he might be a bit racist. Reaping <laughs> Team Ten. What does that even mean? Reaping Team Ten. Every day, bro. <laughs> And that also includes this one where he calls him the <clears throat> P-word after Jake didn't accept KSI's boxing callout in February of 2018. All right, I'm saying this now. Jake Paul is a pussy. With that, Deji soon after went over to LA to chill at the Cloud House and both him and Jake knew of their close proximity to each other and decided to link up in person at a park where Jake was ready to throw it down with the Alatunji brother. Oh, what? You wanna box? <laughs> this guy's a clown. I'm dead. You wanna box me now? Come on, dog. You want you want to box me talk right now? Talk, walk the walk. Come on, G. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm more than serious. I want to handle you, and then I'll handle KSI. Look, how about handle the one that challenges you? Bro, I'm challenging you right now. I am not fighting you now. Okay. If you're not gonna fight me right now, then stop calling me the P word. Deal or no deal? Uh, well, how about deal this? Or no, deal. no, no. How about you deal listen? No deal. Listen to me. How about you listen deal to me? No deal. Listen to me. You can't call me a P word and then pull up with boxing gloves in front of you, bro. And then you, act you, off like that, bro. Kids. This is a lesson for you. You can't call someone a P word and then just like pull up 
and just be like, yo, nah, I can't this do that. Well, this this was this was one big waste of time. Thanks for the uh, no, bro, thirty minute. It was. It, it was. Wasn't a waste of time. It was. Why? Why? Get yourself some Jake Paul merch right here. This is the definition of being soft. Right there. Look at him. What? I'm wasting my time. You? I, I wasted your time? No, Bro, you didn't even give me your merch. As the lore goes, Jake Paul ended up fighting and defeating Deji in a boxing match and had now set his eyes on his older brother, KSI, who both KSI and Jake had been very critical of each other up to that point and further down the line, still to this day. Now, while both KSI and Jake did interact with each other throughout the press conferences of their August 25th event, the first time that both creators were actually close to each other in person dated back to the summer of 2014 where we would get a slight glimpse of it in a Fousey vlog. I challenge you to do Y'all already know, y'all seen what happened. You don't want it. <laughs> Now, of course, years down the line, even with a handshake being thrown out in respect for each other after KSI drew with Logan Paul in their first bout, both KSI and Jake continue to have full on hatred for each other, where one couldn't even walk past another without shots being thrown. Nervous, Jake. No, you're good, we're good, we're good. Your suit was too tight today. But where the peak of their in-person interaction has taken place so far has to have had been when Jake defeated KSI's good friend Giv in the year 2020 and KSI came up in the ring to have the long way to face off between the two take place. KSI is gonna get clocked next. I didn't I'm have to win. win. I didn't I'm have to win by two I'm points. I'm here, I'm here. I'm going I didn't to have to win by two points. Yeah, yeah, that's what you said. You said Giv was gonna me up too, didn't you? Shut the up. Just wait, just wait. Little guy. Bro, yeah, you I see your best friend on his yeah, yeah, yeah. and on his ass You're worse than your bro. Yeah, yeah. You're and you, and you had to be my, gonna be you had to be my bro by a bad call. Look at that. You had to be, you had to, you had to be my bro by a bad call. It wasn't bad call. You're I nice, love big points as well. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's make yeah, it happen. Yeah. Let's make it happen, bro. Yeah, yeah. Hey, A side. You, are A side. A side. Easy, 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 baby. Easy. That's what the people want to see. So while we have yet to have that dream fight take place, we all know that both KSI and Logan had two fights with each other that saw their first battle end in the majority draw in 2018 and had KSI come out on top in their second fight in 2019. KSI was arguably one of Logan's biggest critics throughout Logan's rise. Jake Paul, Logan Paul, any of the Pauls, I don't care. But well, these guys, 100% the most cringe people I've ever watched. And Logan, you just need to get your together bro he's such a clown man running up on me like that and, <laughs> and the funny thing about that is that well this video on the screen right now is the first time that they had confronted each other but it wasn't the first time that the two had actually met up in person back during super bowl 2017 they kind of randomly ran into each other after the game yo walking outside look who we run into so yo is this happening right now <laughs> being from the uk Iconic. what do you think what do you think yo Dude, I love America. You like America, bro? Dude, I love this book. Fast forward, Logan blows up in the summer of 2017. The Forest incident happens. KSI wins his boxing match against Joe Weller and calls Logan out. And then after some consideration, Logan pulls up on KSI while he is at a training gym. Daddy, go! What up, boy? <laughs> what up, G? What's up, bro? Came here to close the deal. Oh, for real? Yeah, let's get a deal done, bro. Oh, Are we so fighting or not? You want to be fighting me right now? Yeah, bro. You gotta get oh, sweaty. Dude. You gotta get in the gym. You're not as tall as people say. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, shit. Ugly when we in the ring, though. Came here to close the deal. Mm -hmm. Came here to close the deal. Okay. Let's close the deal, all right? Well, let's close the deal, though. Well, let's get what? it done. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. 50. I'm down with it. Down, yeah? 50, 50, 50, get a deal done. Hey. August 25th, we fight. Yeah? Let's go. And then fast forward even more, KSI and Logan draw in their first fight, KSI comes out on top in the second, and they further go on to squash their beef by collaborating with each other in a positive way, and they then begin their new business venture together in launching and creating Prime. And actually, that will then take us into talking about this boxing event that both KSI and Logan were prominently featured on, where they had dubbed it the Prime card. While KSI went on to fight the professional boxer Tommy Fury, Logan was set to take on the MMA fighter Dylan Danis, who Dylan had been trashing the Paul brothers' names for years now. And my boxing hit list is... Paul's sisters. He's just come back to be honest with you because he kind of up the Logan. Those guys are all fake. So with this Logan versus Dylan fight now being set, Dennis's way of promoting this event and match was to go after Logan's fiance, just relentlessly posting pics of her and making her out to look like someone that just goes around with many men. It became effective as it reportedly pulled in billions of impressions and with Logan feeling the heat of the constant attacks to his fiance, it was only a matter of time until both him and Dylan met up with each other in person and see if any of them would act different in the real world as opposed to online. You sent me so many messages. Why 
I might, well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had two knee, uh, knee surgeries. It sounds like you have Conor McGregor's nut sack in your mouth. Oh, this watch guy it. has re retweet, uh, watch his little tweets. Like, that's what I'm saying right there. Like, yeah. watching you stumble your way through these sentences is, is painful. That's fine, yeah, I agree. But they just want to, yeah, whatever. Exhibit A. I got better more, I said I got, uh, Yo! Oh, get this man a glass of water! The two had more encounters with each other throughout the build-up of the fights, and as we all saw, Logan got the better hand in the boxing match against Dylan, and went on to defeat the trash-talking MMA fighter. So as we've seen throughout Logan's history, he's not shy of meeting up with people face-to-face, -face, especially those who have spoken critically of him online, and we will see that yet again take place when he took part in Mr. Beast's challenge video of having 50 YouTubers be placed into a giant cube, some of those YouTubers being ones that have spoken out against Logan's actions in the creator space. One, in a lighter note, being being Matt Pat here. In true Logan Paul form, everything was not quite what it appeared to be. Considering his track record, I hesitate to take him at his word. For some reason, I just get a little suspicious of things that he puts his name to. Not really sure why. Today, we're investigating Logan Paul's crypto zoo. Yeah. I want to apologize to the internet. Yeah, I can't quite put my finger on it. Matt Pat in the prep room before heading out into the cube, met up with Logan and gave him his props before being hit by the past comments that he had made on Logan and his brand, Prime. Congrats on the wrestling stuff, man. You Thank are you. awesome in Thanks, Matt. You just bring such an energy and athleticism to it. It's, it's Thanks, awesome. Matt, like you've done, you. you've done really good work. There, I wanted man. to say uh, before we get into this, yeah. like yeah, I don't know, we went through that like prime. Sh are you yeah. aware of it? I am aware of it. Yeah, yeah. What Logan is likely referring to here are these three videos that Matt Pat did on Prime, which are currently enlisted right now, and it just sounds like some legal talk must have happened between both Prime slash Logan and the theories team slash Matt Pat. But yeah, with that, now let's get back to their combo. And I just wanted to say like I'm glad we reached a resolution. You oh, know? yeah. No, I'm, I'm sorry that that whole thing happened no seriously worries, no, no worries. thanks for being like receptive to us you know? oh 100 no I, I and i get it man like we actually have one coming out this week in defense of prime and all the pfa stuff is it in defense of us yeah Are yeah you no 100 it is the way that they're trying to like sandbag you guys it's wild so terrible it's wild bro the streamer ludwig was also another contestant in the challenge that also made multiple videos critiquing logan seems like logan paul's main ability is to hype things up create a lot of attention around things make good videos but not to follow through be a good ethical and moral actor he's just like the most narcissistic human I've ever seen online. The Matrix is real. Pray you never become its target. Your rage said it best. You not its target, you just an idiot. When the cube challenge was having some downtime, Logan decided to interact with the streamer, and Ludwig wasn't too secretive about his past comments that he had made on the controversial YouTuber. Hey Ludwig, forgive me bro, you're a streamer? Mm -hmm. Bro, you're, you're hilarious. I don't know how I haven't seen your stuff. I find you so funny. What kind of stuff you do? Uh, it's mostly like gaming sh Although I have a commentary channel. You'll find videos about you. I have to warn you ahead of time. I feel like I could probably guess that. <laughs> I told Moist, I was like, bro, I don't take it personal. I like your content. And I'm sure I like yours too, bro. And yep, that'll bring us to the biggest criticizer of them all. Moist Critical, aka Penguin Zero, aka Charlie, whatever you want to call him. Critical, for the past several years, has taken numerous shots at Logan Paul throughout Paul's countless dramas and controversies in the YouTube space. So it seems the main antagonist this season will be this douche noodle wearing the alien hat. His name's Logan Paul. He's an absolutely soulless man. Logan, you hired three criminals to run this with you. And this fight, if you can even call it a fight, was mainly just Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather hugging a lot. We are seven seconds into this and it's already a terrible start. What in the history of Logan Paul has earned anyone's trust ever. With many of the videos garnering millions of views, Logan was sure to be one of them, and when him and Charlie were in the waiting room before heading off into the cube, the two went on to meet each other and converse about Moises' content on Logan in the past. What's up, bro? Hey, nice How to are you, dude? I like your videos, dude. I appreciate I, it. I know you've talked some shit, but... <laughs> I'm always super happy that people don't take it personally. Man. I don't. Okay, I don't. Thank God. I understand I'm a and I appear to be a Bro, good to see you, bro. And also, Prime's pretty fire. Thanks. I'm not allowed to say that on camera. I get I it, bro. I get it, bro. Talk <laughs> bro. Good luck today, right? Yeah, likewise, bro. Yeah, likewise. likewise. In the cube, they even had this humorous moment together. I'm gonna try to win. Yeah, for sure. If I win, I know for a fact he's gonna be like a f***ing course, bro. bro. Logan <laughs> Paul won them. And later on, throughout the competition, as downtown moments went on to take place, Logan once more went up to Charlie and gave him his props and thoughts on him as both a person and a creator. You strike me as pretty intelligent. I'm not special, though. I just... That's not true, bro. <laughs> nah, bro. You're a freak athlete, man. I watch, uh, I'm a huge wrestling guy. What are your verticals? You stream comics, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have the wrestling, which I didn't know about. You obviously have the YouTube channel. I basically just use the channel to just do anything that seems fun. I just love it, bro. I really do. Man. Really? Yeah, like I said, I've been doing it since I've been 11. I also started when I was 10, bro. No, I know. You've been on it for a minute. And when Ludwig, Moist, and Matt Pat each meeting up with Logan Paul in person in a positive manner, Logan looked back on their interactions and felt grateful for having it all take place. I got to, like, squash a few beefs. You did? Yeah. Like, bro, him, Moist Critical, Matt Pat, they've all, like, made, like, a series of videos, like, 
talking mad like they're on that wave. It's like, I don't take it personal, bro. I, I, I get it. And they're cool as Oh, well, that didn't age well with Ludwig. I decided to grab Logan Paul's prime, took a sip, it was water. Did he replace that shit with water straight up on my mama? I'm telling you, he did that shit. Jimmy's team was bringing water bottles to drink. My options were drink out of the water bottle and throw the prime out or pour the water in the prime so I at least am still marketing my product. I was in the box with you, Ludwig, for 36 hours, bro. You saw me drink prime afterwards. He talks shit about me. He lies. He's a hypocrite. He, cl he farms his clips. He's a fucking hypocritical, yeah, well, lying, it, blockhead, beta bitch, bro. Well, like, why are you making shit up? Well, I even, I tried so hard. I tried so hard to like this guy. And I'm not the only one who left thinking, that dude's kind of a fucking douchebag. But I'm gonna mind my business. Anyway, after he called me a blockhead, beta bitch, and talked about me for 10 minutes on his podcast, he factually, right after, talked about how he thinks the moon landing isn't real. This is also the guy who filmed a dead body and also the guy who released a lunch package with mold and also the guy who sued someone for making a video essay about him and also the guy who said that a woman boxer shouldn't be able to win the Olympics because she's, and get this, a woman. So, you know, I'm good. And with that, that'll be the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you in another one. Not to mention this guy's filming it's everything. It's critical. I don't, it's critical.